Deus Ex Machina. Our video game's art. It's Our Sinclair, episode 81. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to Our Sinclair. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today Aaron, we're going to be talking about Deus Ex Machina. Oh man. Yeah. Now Aaron, <laughs> you know, Deus Ex Machina, I'm sure you looked this up. What does it mean in Latin? It means uh, I'm making films while high, <laughs> is my guess. <laughs> I don't know what it, it means. It means God in the machine. Oh, I see. This is, this is a, a cinematic or a literature device where you have Something that comes out of the blue that drastically changes the plot. It comes in and saves the day. Yeah, well, not relevant. Have you ever had a moment in your life where things were going so bad and then all of a sudden a virtual Superman came in and saved your bacon? I'm usually in the, at the role reversal. Mm. Something's going horrible for somebody else and I have to come in and clean you it up. You save the day. I don't feel like a Superman. No, I'm like a double superpowered janitor, mm. basically, that has to come in <laughs> and clean up someone's hideous disaster. That's usually the way it goes. You know, this this game, is it, it reminds me a lot of the Floyd, the Pink Floyd. You boy, know. Mm, at when I was playing this and listening to the soundtrack mm -hmm. thing, I was having some big time Pink Floyd the Wall flashbacks. Right. Now, have you done all the stuff? Have you played The Wizard of Oz and started up Dark Side of the Moon? Have you done all the? I've all been. That? A, I was at a party where someone did that, mm -hmm. and it was dumb. <laughs> right now, I like that album. Right. I like Wizard of Oz. I mean, I'm sure someone can make some sort of correlation between the two, but I don't know, it's also so. It's just so cheesy and played mm -hmm. out, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, are you a, are you a fan of? Uh, sort of art rock en masse you know like are, do you want to be preached to about the evils of society when you put on a piece of popular music actually i want to contribute to the evils of society <laughs> so you're going the other way nothing you're playing makes, the fade nothing when i when you know when i sit down to listen to a good tune right mm -hmm. here's what i like to do i put on one of those uh uh, uh bondage outfits okay you know i'm talking about yeah. real tight mm -hmm. you know and I kind of hang myself from the ceiling by the waist, you know. And I've got one of those uh, cat of nine tails gimmicks, right. and then mm -hmm. I've got I'll put on some of that uh, Frank Zappa, mm -hmm. and then just swing around and just that's how I like to spend an afternoon, brother. Well, boy, we picked the right game this week. Yeah, because I mean I was loving this. This fit right in with I get a couple TVs in there. <laughs> yep, yep. So you know, I think there's a I don't have a problem with if 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 music has a message. Yeah, you know. But what I do have a problem with is some sort of grand design that it's like, you know, when the when the author of an album has a vision and the vision is so obscure that you're like, you've really got to listen to this over and over again to get what I'm talking about. Well, I understand what you're saying, but it's funny coming from you. It sort of makes you a hypocrite. In a well, lot of ways. Listen, that's my middle name. Because your, your music has a message and the message is. Stab yourself in the ears with rusty corkscrews. Well, that's that, the message. I wouldn't call that a hidden message. It's not hidden, that's there for sure. Go. It's an obvious message. But yeah, I agree. Sometimes things can get a little, uh, I don't want to say pushy, but let's say that's yeah. the word. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. Is that where we're going here? Well, that's where we're going. And let's go, Aaron. Let's talk about this. There's no reason to put it off Machina. anymore, is there? So, well, let's just talk about it. Deus Ex Machia. You know, I didn't know anything about this. I, I thought the name sounded cool, like some cyberpunk stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, released uh, right before Halloween, no doubt, October of 1984. Uh, published by Automata UK Limited, who uh, this was the outfit that was founded by a fellow named Mel Croucher. Uh, did you look into Mel Croucher at all? Yeah. Me he, too. He's what is an you? interesting fellow. Yeah. Uh, Mel Croucher is, is one of these people. He's, he's, he's sort of like a affable, mad genius type. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, they, they were, it seemed like the UK was growing these guys by the basket pool in the early 80s. You had people like Terry Gilliam. You had, they were there, these guys, they, they've done all kinds of different things. They're involved in all sorts of different media enterprises. Mel Croucher is probably most famous for starting the first computer game company. Yeah. And uh, he did this by basically um, asking one of his friends that was a DJ to broadcast program, uh, you know, uh, stuff that, I don't even know how you call it, when you play audio. a tape, audio, yeah. 
<laughs> what do you what do you call that? Those waves that travel through the air that go into That's your right, ears. Audio what is that book, called? Yeah. Um, he, he, he got one of his friends to start broadcasting programming audio over the airwaves, yeah. and that's how he distributed his programs. Weird. We didn't have that in the U.S., that's for sure. Well, we, there are, there, it, we sort of kind of, I mean, it was kind of there. It's not like this. I mean, yeah, this guy, I looked him up. I'd heard his name. Uh, and, uh, it's interesting that he did, he did end up, uh, releasing a bunch of games. Uh, he's a personality. Uh, Wiki here has this, and you can take this with a great assault. The, he, they've called him the father of British video game industry. I think he might have wrote that. Um, <laughs> and a pioneer in effective in uh, uh, effective computing. I don't know what that means. Well, I'm just saying that's what the, that's what the Wiki uh, said. This game definitely affected me. I can tell you yeah, that. Yeah, that's for sure. So I guess we'll get more into the particulars of who's in this in a minute, but we might as well get their normal crap out here. So. Again, this game created by Mel Crutch, who's also a, 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 contributes his voice to the soundtrack. Yes, this game has a soundtrack. You want to get into the whole soundtrack thing before we move on? No, because we have to talk about that when we start talking about the game. Okay. I do want to mention that I believe that he's also a cartoonist. I think he's had uh, comics running in several magazines throughout his career as well. So this is a, he's sort of a renaissance man. Yeah. He's, got, he's, he's involved in lots of different multimedia yeah. stuff. So, uh, and we'll touch on it in a minute, but this game... I mean, if you tried to play this game without the audio, you'd be boned. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, this had uh, a multitude of personalities that starred in the audio portion of it. Uh, the uh, uh, It was for the, the 48K Spectrum. I didn't realize how many... Uh, can you imagine this thing getting ported? It did. A lot of ports. I can see. I mean, I can, it would port... I mean, if it can run on the 48K Spectrum, it can run on it's pretty not, much anything no, else. No, you're missing my point here. <laughs> it did get ported. I didn't say it couldn't run it. So you've got the MSX, the C64, uh, Android, iOS, the Ouya. That was what that that surprised me. That's surprising. Uh, Windows, Linux, Mac, OS. Uh, uh, this uh, originally sold for 15 pounds. I saw an interview with Croucher where he said part of the reason he thought this game wasn't a bigger success was that the price tag was too high. Yeah, and and you know the you know we talk about all the time how your your average Spectrum game was you know your high priced Spectrum yeah. game was between seven and nine pounds. And I asked on the Discord, I said because this did come with an album, what were you paying for an LP at this time? You know, and, and a lot of people said they were paying between you know four and, and, and seven dollars for an LP, yeah. maybe nine pounds for a double LP. Tapes, obviously you buy an album on tape, it's gonna be cheaper than that. So this was not a good value proposition for a video game or a record album. Well, from what I read, uh, one of the reasons this was more expensive was it came with a big poster. Mm. All right? And, he, and uh, he wanted that in there. Mm -hmm. So he wanted that stuff. When I read an interview with him about this. I mean, he was pleased with the game, but he thought it would have done better if, it, if the price would be down. And he thinks sure. that, he thinks that poster was one of the reasons why. Interesting. You wouldn't think that a poster would add a lot to the cost. Yeah. But there you go. So um, we should just get into the game proper. Yeah. So I now get into the cast and stuff. So this is a game you load up, and there you get instructions uh, to uh, get your tape deck ready. And it tells you when to synchronize the tape playing with the game playing. Yeah. Okay, uh, the uh, uh, tape is a uh, hodgepodge. Uh, it's an audio trip into the nether regions of the soul. Basically, you've got narration, you've got singing, you've got weird voice sampling, mm -hmm. uh, and and chanting, and all kinds of stuff on it. Uh, the tape has a lot of people, like for example, one of the first patient persons I saw when this thing came up, and there's little caricatures of the people in the tape as the game loads, was uh, uh, Pertwee, John Pertwee. Now, if you're like me, you would know that John Pertwee was the third Doctor Who. Oh. So this is this guy's no lightweight. He's a he's a, you didn't know that. Uh, no, I'm not a big Who guy. Yeah, he was the third Doctor, and he and he. Uh, he was the doctor for quite a while. He had a real good run, very successful uh, guy. He was sort of the uh, 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 fancy boy of the doctors. He wore really fancy outfits, but he was also kind of tough, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and he had a cool car. Uh, but anyway, he did, he's the narration on this. Uh, the other cast members, and I looked these people up, and I'll be honest with you, the other ones I wasn't familiar with. Boat uh, Ian Robbins Dury was a British uh, singer, songwriter, and actor, according to Wiki, and was a punk uh, singer, lead singer of a band called uh, 
Ian Dury and the Blockheads and uh, Kilborn and High Roads. Have you ever heard of any of these? Not familiar with that. So, yeah. but and you could tell when this guy's on because there is sort of a punky mm-hmm. twinge to it, I guess. Um, another fellow on here, uh, fr- or a lady, I should say. I said this is an this is an actor, Francis Alec Howard, better known by as Frankie Howard. He was a comedian. He got a, he was a radio. He got a, a, he had an act. He got on radio. His act got over on radio, and then he ended up getting into TV. And he had two. He had a couple uh, catchphrases, including "Oh no, misses and titter ye not." Oh. Those are his catch. So I like this guy already. He's, he's probably my favorite of everybody you've mentioned so far. You've got uh, Edward Palmer Thompson. This guy was an English historian, writer, socialist, and peace campaigner. I think some of his stuff is in snippets, like sound snippets, but I can't be uh, sure about that. Then you've got Donna Bailey. Donna Bailey, I think, does the majority of the singing. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find anything on her. Her name's really generic. Mm-hmm. Wiki didn't have a hot link to her. I looked around. And I, did, I gave this the college try, so she may be a big deal. I don't know. Um, and then, of course, you've got Mel Croucher, who also does a voice on the tape. So once you begin the game, you uh, start the tape. The narrator comes on, and you are told this tale of uh, uh, the last mouse on Earth. And right as he, he gets uh, hit with nerve gas, right before he dies, he uh, <laughs> he goes into grave detail about what happens to this mouse. He basically poops, and th- from this poop springs this game, I propose, uh, and <laughs> think about it, uh, which is... Uh, Seven Steps Through Life, basically, is is, is the uh, Jetto. Now, uh, you should know up front that calling this a game is, I would say, fairly liberal. In fact, I'm not sure your joystick motions, I mean, they did they moved stuff, but I don't really know how much of an effect it had on the overall thing. Okay, well, l- let me let me stop you, because I, I spent a lot of time with this game. Yeah, me too, 46 minutes. Well... <laughs> I, I, I essentially played through it twice because yeah. the Uh-oh. first time I wanted to make sure, the first time I played through it, I was like, well, I'm not sure if I actually got it or not. And I had the same question. Okay. Yeah. So I played through it again and you're, you do, you, every game. Okay. We're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay. What this is. Okay. For people that aren't familiar with it, imagine that you're playing a, 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 an album. Okay. And every, you, know, you pretend like you're playing a tape. And every song is like three minutes long. So imagine that you had a timed game that went along with each song. Yes. And in between, there was some narration. Okay? That's what Deus Ex Machina is. That's what the game is. So, at the end of every round, you get a percentage of how well you've done relative to what you're supposed to do in the game. So, is this a game? Yes. It emphatically is a game. Because there's a goal, you have control over what happens on the screen, you can do, there are varying degrees on how well you can do in this game. So, let's just get that out of the way. This is a game. It remains to be seen if this is a good game or not. But there, it is a game. Okay, alright. So, you st- basically, uh, as near as I can figure, and you step in here when you think otherwise, uh, you are leading a. Uh, you are going through the, the whole life cycle of a person, right? From conception all the way to death, and a little bit beyond that, circle of life, boat. And uh, you are in control of these various. Let's call them mini games, which I mean, it makes sense. Uh, to uh, as you go through, uh, they range anywhere from. What's the PC way to describe? Well, I mean, it's like the early ones are like a, a zygotes are going on. Well, you've got you've got your 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 because you are a test tube baby. Yeah, your your cells are formed. You know, it's like the mother and the father cell are formed before even the conception happens. So you start out at the cellular level, and then you've got a level where you've got the sperm and the egg, and then you've got baby level, and then you've got and and, and you go from there. Yes. Uh, you move all the way into uh, uh, your uh, adulthood. There, your first, uh, uh, let's say, love. I don't want to say love affair, 
your first romantic encounter mm -hmm. and don't don't read into it it's not as sexy as you think uh <laughs> in yeah. fact it's much less sexy no. than you can possibly it's imagine. the least sexy thing ever uh there are there are elements this where you're sort of learning to hobble and then you then there's a element where there's a section where you learn to run you walk then you run then you're jumping mm -hmm. so you're slowly developing motor skills then uh, you then you're a soldier yeah and then you you're running away from the city and then you are getting ready to die yeah well there's a scene where you're a big fat guy that's running when you're running the away from the city well but what happened there exactly well you've got words coming towards you no and no, you've no, got no, to no. Jump i mean what happened words. between the soldier part and the huge fat Listen, guy? if part? you're asking me to explain <laughs> that's the plot what i of want this, yes then you're you're asking the wrong because guy. they didn't explain it in the thing it's yeah just, it's not supposed to have it's this is a very loose collection of ideas yeah and uh, what you're supposed to get out of it is what you bring to it. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess I brought a lot of questions, furrowed brows, and innovative to understand. Because for the most part, I just followed along. Now, I will say, um, in a weird way, okay, uh, this was, let's just say it was something I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I went through the whole thing. I don't have any need to do it again. Uh, but some of the music was sort of okay, and the uh, the barrage of of stimuli that you were bombarded with had a meaningful effect. I don't know what exactly it was, but I mean, the, what they were going for here. This what this reminds me of a lot. This is, I mean, I'm sure this has been said many times, but this seems far ahead of the game in some some aspects because. This was a multimedia experience, okay? I don't know how many games uh, had the combination of audio and video as part. I mean, it's, it's integral to this. You've got to have the tape. If you just load this up to play it, you're boned. That's not good. You're, well, you're, not, you're not boned. It's not but fun you're, you're, or interesting. Yeah. 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 It no. just seems confusing. I mean, right. it all syncs up to a certain degree quite nicely. And I don't know how often that was done before this. Was it done at all before well, this, he, mode? Here's the thing. This concept is genius, okay? Mel yeah. Crouch, Mel Croucher's got that Joss Whedon air about it, that stench about him, where people follow him around thinking that he's the greatest thing that's ever happened. Okay? You really hate Josh Whedon. I'm you? not sold on this guy. But this is a genius idea, and it's crazy that nobody did it before or nobody did it since. Because, let's be honest with ourselves, the 48K Spectrum, not an audio powerhouse, okay? But if you created a series of games that were time attack games and synced them up to music and sound effects and, and audio instructions, that would be awesome. Now, the reason why I'm sure this wasn't done was because you're essentially doubling the cost of production because you have to have an audio tape as well as a cassette tape to run the game. But for games that have big budgets, you know, like for example, like 720, remember 720? Yeah. Some versions came with the cassette that had the, the, the sound on it, okay. you know? And so I think if you were doing a full price Spectrum game, you're running the numbers where the, the you know, the, the actual cost of the cassette is gonna be pretty low. Yeah. And you could package in another cassette without too much difficulty. Why this was not done more often boggles the mind. And I'm not saying that these people were stupid for not doing it, because I never thought about doing it before no. playing this. You know, the, so. the, what it reminds me of is we, me and the Brent on ARG did, I believe it was the Dick Smith System 80, okay? And one of the things it had, it could do, it could load data and audio simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And so it would have tutorials that would load as you went and it would talk to you while they did that. That's super myself, cool. That's really that's super cool. That's really cool. I think it was the System 80. It was either the Dixon System 80 or the, it had to be the System 80. Uh, and so I thought this is a neat idea to do that. And this this is sort of the, this is like the low end version where they, you know, they had, but I mean, it works. It works well. And syncing it up, you know, it, it absolutely would be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I... I'm not sold on the game proper, you know. Listen, you know yeah, what they say about art. You know, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, you know, it, I like what I what I see or whatever. You know, I, some things I like, whether it's art or not. I know what say. I like. I think is what you're so, saying. Whatever. The point of it is, to some people, and I've read some reviews and some magazine reviews where it said this is like the and it's a contemporary mm -hmm. that said this was the game of the future. This is what all games are going to be like. 
And if you think about how ludicrous a statement that is, because, my God, the games industry would be the toilet. Mm-hmm. But what you said, you've got to, I wish you'd have wrote for back then, because, I mean, that's a valid point. You could use the concept behind this technically and make some nice games that had cool soundtracks and just time them. That would mm-hmm. work. Uh, and whether they did that is remains. We we have not played enough. Maybe there's tons of these games yeah. for the Spectrum. We just haven't played. All right, we we haven't played enough of them. To, I've never seen one on mm-hmm. here. Uh, but this one, in terms of an experience, I'm glad I saw it. It's like going to a uh, modern art museum. It's okay to go once, but if it doesn't tickle your fancy, you may not necessarily need to go back a second time. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate the fact that this game exists 100 percent because. Yeah. The Spectrum is the computer platform where I feel like the most risks were taken. I mean, envelopes were pushed in the way on the Spectrum, and I think part of it was because of the technical limitations of the system. People thought, and, and the fact that, you know, like Mel Krauser, he'd been, he, he made this computer software company. He wanted to do something different than Rainbird or something like that. Yeah, you know? I, uh, it's, it's odd. Uh, so, of course, we've said it about 30 times now. Uh, this game has been re-released multiple times on multiple machines. That's most of the machines I li- listed off there. They were not involved in the original releases. They were released down the line. There was actually a sequel release of this, which I think uh, Mel's also behind. I actually watched the playthrough of that. And if you can, if in your mind, can conceive of what a modern version of this game would be like, that's what it's like. It's bizarre. It's just it's better graphics, better sound. Yeah. But I mean, it's I, you know, you know I, a, I really think that the the shortcoming in this game isn't the concept. I mean, the concept is what it is. The yeah. quality of these games is not great. What the what these games are? The first two games where you're a cell and you've got you're you're a green box and there's a blue box. There's a lot of those. There's I, several of those. I have games. no idea. I have no you idea. Sort of. What to do I think there. you're avoiding that. That's a dodging. Well, thing. see, I wasn't sure if you were supposed to dodge it or you're supposed to catch it. Okay. I was dodging. And, the, and the, the manual gives you no information. No. Okay. Now, the games where you are essentially dodging things, you're, it's a horizontally scrolling thing and you're dodging, those are okay. The ones where you're jumping. When you jump over the words, that's okay. Um, but you need, in my opinion, and maybe this was done for artistic reasons, is that you don't know how well you do on any of these games until the very end. Yeah. And even still, you still don't really know how well you do. Well, and so. something else that irritates... I mean, listen, let's talk about... Because we're putting the game over to a certain degree, but there are some things I thought that went over the top. There's a level where you're running and you're jumping over these words. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this is the I thought you said pretentious. This oh is yeah, the height. Well, it's, it's jumping over war and skull. It's like Pink Floyd put out the wall, and this game said, "Hold my beer." Well, no, this Pink Floyd, the wall, like there that's the most pretentious theme. album ever made. I love that album. No, that album sucks. Oh, you're. It sucks. Another brick in the wall. That song sucks. I don't agree with you on that. Uh, and I and we can get into discussion. We don't need no time. education. We don't need no thought control. It doesn't get any more pretentious. Than well, that. I mean, there was, it's also it dumb. wasn't just saying like we don't like education. It, we're, it, we're, this this is off the point no. Of this. We're going to talk this the rest going, of the podcast. I'm not track going to track a, the wall. I'm not going into a liter a, a musical discussion with you on Pink Floyd. The point of it is this. I thought was over the top, uh, in, in, a, in a dopey '80s sort of way. Where you could have a game where, I mean, sort of like Top Banana. You know, here's a game that's environmentally safe. I didn't like that part. And there were other parts I thought were kind of goofy. Uh, It's all goofy. Listen, screw it. I didn't like this, all right? I just didn't think it was that good. I watched it. I went through the thing. I played it. I didn't like it. I, I, I felt like... It's hard to review, too, Boat, by the way. I felt like this was a game... I feel, well, also, I felt like all of the individual sections were too long. Like, I realized that they, what happened was they wrote this music first. I'm almost sure, well, obvious, I, they, I'm 100% sure of this. They wrote all the music before, and then they just stuck the game in for as long as the music was. Yeah. And I felt like the songs were too long. Because the songs aren't particularly good. This is not... I thought some of them were okay. They are okay, but listen, this is just not... Like, if you... this None of these songs would be, like, songs that would make it big. Some of the songs know? were, like, more like musical chanting. Yeah. Like the sperm one. And then, but there was some, like, the romantic one I thought was pretty good. Also, the one where the chick said she hated him. I thought that was okay. But I... They were depressing. How did this make you feel inside? Right. Well, this, Did yeah, it make you feel good? Or, no. No, it could be either. Yeah. And, and, and I don't know if I was supposed to feel bad... The whole premise of this game made me feel bad. Right. We came from the rat poop, mm-hmm. all this nerve gas. It's 
what is this? Again, I, it, you know, this, this this happened at the same part of time. This was at the same, you know, like Brazil. Did you ever see Brazil? I try to watch it. Okay. Get this is it. in this is the same sort of vein where it's like this dystopian future. I don't know what was going on over in England because England they're always talking about how great it is over there compared to America. Apparently, in 1984, it wasn't. Because well, everybody was depressed about everything. Because be all fair, you everyone saw on Earth, the, we we were depressed in the late seventies and early eighties. Maybe, maybe they were just catching the it then. We weren't as we weren't as intelligent as them. That's you know the only ray of sunshine was Douglas Adams. He was the only person that that was that was that was doing it right. Everybody else was depressed. Even the funny people like Terry Gilliam were depressing. So yeah, I hated this game. It just made me feel. Not it, yeah. a, it wasn't even. It was a combination of weird. And bad. Yeah. Like, Weird there was no, and bad. There, there was go. no part of this that was uplifting, or there was no part of this that made me feel right. like... Right. It well, made me feel like life sucks. Mm -hmm. You go through life, and at the end, you just fall over dead. And, it's a, and then you're... Right. It's Which, horrible. I mean, like, it's okay to have that viewpoint, but that's not what I'm going to fire up for some entertainment. No, it's not. I mean, yeah. this isn't... We're not we're not turning on the Arts and Entertainment Network right. here, although that... <laughs> let's not about that, the better. But, yeah. I, I Yes, yes. It's an art piece. I didn't like it. What did the people think, Bo? Talk to the people. We obviously don't have a clue. We obviously don't have a clue. Because this game was universally lauded on the Discord reviews. Okay. Okay. We're going to start out with Will Brooker. Okay. The Brookster. He says, Deus Ex Machina, which I potentially pronounce correctly as Deus Ex Machina, is the most ambitious, experimental, and uncanny experience I've ever had on the ZX Spectrum. Yeah. Not so much a game, more an interactive work of art. If you were baffled by Frankie Goes to Hollywood's quest for human fulfillment, this is not yeah. one for you. That's true. This is not something to come with that. Yeah, yeah. I thought about it. But if you skip it, you'll also be missing out on some mind-blowing graphics. I disagree. Well, they were good. They were good graphics. No, 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 they weren't. They, 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 I thought they, some like, screens were pretty attractive. Popeye, Trapdoor, those are good graphics. I thought graphics. the baby was pretty good. The baby is disgusting. Well, but he's a. But all babies look like that. No, all babies are not disgusting. Trust me, be there when they're born. Let me tell you something. It's a. It's a H.P. Lovecraftian <laughs> experience that I'll never forget. Um, he says, uh, huge smooth sprites illustrating the passage of an average man from birth to death, and a surprisingly successful synchronization of cassette music and voiceover with what you see on screen. I will never forget the moment when I was about to jump a gap in one of the later levels, and the voice on tape warned me, "Wait for it. Wait for it." as if I could see what I was doing. For a teenager in the mid-1980s, this was like science fiction. So put aside your preconceptions, tune in, and prepare to freak out to this unique avant-garde experiment. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that's pretty much, that sounds pretty good to me. McChessers writes, Deus Ex Machina is an interactive auto-visual auto experience years, possibly decades, ahead of its time. There you go. An enormous folly by the mad genius... There we go. Mel Croucher, it's amazing that it works as well as it does. Sadly, its lavish budget did not translate into lavish sales and ultimately sunk Automata. A pity since they produced some of the weirdest and most original titles of the 1980s. It seems unfair to rate Deus Ex Machina as a video game. There is no fail state as such. One playthrough takes exactly the, amount, the same amount of time whether you do well at each of the various mini games or not. But competition is not really the point. The purpose of them is to bring you into the world that the audio is describing, bleak as it is, and from that viewpoint are a success, even if you want to, wouldn't want to play them without the soundtrack. This is, without a doubt, a title that fans of the specy or video game history... Let me try that again. This is, without a doubt, a title that fans of the specy or video game history in general should try at least once. I agree. Um, Jigglebox writes... A unique musical and audio specky experience which features some legendary screen and music stars. John Pert Pertwee, is that right? Pertwee, correct. Frankie Howard and Ian Drury. So apparently these guys are big. They're all big well, names I, over there. Pertwee I knew, and the other guys I may recognize, but I didn't recognize my voice. The experience involves a series of mini games taking the participant through a life from conception to death with the musical experience via separate tape or digital source. It's a master class in creativity, software development, and audio production, which thoroughly absorbed me for the three quarters of an hour that I participated. It was more like a meditation than a game playing experience. Nothing too difficult to get to grips with, but always requiring attention and focus. I'm glad I've played it, and I will return to it when I'm in a mood more akin to sitting down to listen to an LP than having it go on a game. 
And finally, Paul. Oh no, not finally. Sorry, we got we, we got more. We this was this was a I can't popular believe one. I can't believe this the amount of people that one. played this. Um, Paul, aka Hermsky, chairman of Clive's Club, weighs in. He says, "A big Herm firm. I am machine. Thumbs up. This is not a game. It's an experience. A dark comedy experience, emerging you and your imagination into new dimensions." Using an audio soundtrack brings the program to life during an era of games that can never compete against film due to 8-bit sound limitations. Mel Croucher found a way to do this by recruiting some well-known actors and musicians. If you played this game without a soundtrack, it would be pointless, as many pirates found out, after only obtaining the program. I remember playing this for the first time as a teenager. My dad walked in on me and asked me what I, was I playing. The late Ian Drury's, I'm a fertilizing agent, my friends are all wriggly, fish and chips and bicycle clips, yeah. birded out of my stereo. Science homework, Dad, I replied. He later popped back in during the late Frankie Howard's aggressive war crimes or easy pattern. <laughs> it's yeah. not homework, is it, son? No, Dad, I replied sheepishly. These, these, these reviews are like, I'm enjoying these more than the game. Yeah. Pajaga, that's the thing. I think this is a, much like the pawn. I want to keep coming back to the pawn. This is a game that you read about it, and you're like, man, this sounds awesome. So, Pajaco, 6502, he says, I've been aware of this for many years and never played it until recently. As an audio-visual experience, Deus Ex Machina is awesome, and playing it now as a grown-up, I can certainly appreciate more than I would have as a 10-year-old. As a game, though, Deus Ex Machina sadly isn't great. A lot of the time I wasn't sure if I was doing the right thing. Some games went on for too long, and in places it seemed impossible to perfect a level playthrough. Graphically it's simple but really nice, and the sprites are great for a specy. Funnily enough, some of the mini games aren't a million miles away from popular mobile endless runner type games you see today. Ultimately, it's not a desert island disc, but I am glad I have finally experienced it, and for under an hour of your time, it's worth checking out. Hard to score this one, but 10 out of 10 is an experience, and 3 out of 10 is a game. Mm -hmm. And finally, <laughs> Z9K9 mm. writes, A new medium's freedom from genre, a creator and his team's worldly guts, and enormous energy for creative things must all have transpired here. So Z9 has taken the pretentious meter, and he's cranked it up to 12. Listen, at this Z9's point. got a, uh, he's like a poet, dude. This game-like concept album that this is might not have quite the musical endurance of, say, Pink Floyd at their mid-career highs, but for a debut release, it's pretty great. The free-thinking vibes and the lush synths loosened me up. Ugh. The modernist machine-fearing angst is a cool contrast. If only Automata could have carried on doing these for a decade or two, we could now plot more of the band, that band's exploration and quiet revolutions, gossip about their personality splits and reformations. But the commercial expectations for games grew differently. Graphics were paramount. Sound and iconoclastic identity fell way down. You'd be better off listening to pop music for those. Nowadays, the game is a great focusing agent. Speaking as someone who finds it hard to sit still for music anymore, but that aside, the games are simple but compelling, perhaps mostly because games are compelling. I don't understand what that sentence means. They're so weird, perhaps mostly because the soundtrack is weird. It's mostly just up, down, left, right, and I'd like more actual gameplay weirdness. But it's still a unique experience. I can't pretend to assess this game as if there's no soundtrack. And I'm glossing over the various striking cross-media moments that it does have and the inspiring effect it has on me. You could say it's a fertilizing agent. To return to the theme since I just played it, the last stage is unfailingly moving. I feel panicked and melancholy as I try to save my dying selves. Oh man. It's very human. Plus, I can't say boo to a Defender Mountainscape. I admire that so early, such an ambitious thing got completed, marketed, and sold it all, while so many other prestigious projects buckled under their own weight. It remains deliciously weird even now. Bravo. Wow, man. You read that? You could have been on the album. You and Pertwee <laughs> could have been on there. That was a beautiful boat. Well, this this actually uh, was fairly well received amongst the uh, amongst the, the media. Intelligentsia. Uh, it got a uh, Sinclair user score of ninety, your computer a score of eighty, and was a uh, 
uh, nominated for a golden joystick boaster. You know, I wish this game, even though this game is is not, it's, uh, will I ever play this again? No. But I wish this game would have been successful because it would have showed up on the radar of other people and more people could have done this combination audio tape and game experience I'm because i think it, that's a winning i'm idea. hoping we see more of this mm. but you gotta listen you're i know you're burying this guy but you gotta give the guy credit listen he, he's I the father the of, the, the of the uk video game industry and he came up with a pretty clever gimmick here you gotta give him that i do i give him that i give him all of that yeah but it's just i mean and maybe there's also listen there's always the uh, the ever popular cultural difference that's true thing. that's true we well, don't we're get not, it because we're not british we're not getting it you know i mean i know it's an art piece maybe i'm too big a big fat slob to care you know i like pretty pictures and uh, scenery shots stuff mm-hmm. like that i don't know if i'm into the whole uh wacky i mean there was a comedy element to it yeah you yeah. know again and, it's very terry gilliam-esque very yeah. Terry Gilliam. Oh, these are available uh, boats. Should you, should you decide to go out and buy yourself, pick yourself one of these bad boys up? Uh, they were pretty pricey uh, boat. Uh, there were none on eBay right now. There was the poster was up on eBay, but I did see that some had sold in the past, and, and these could go for a few bucks. They were normal. They were uh, over the price of a normal tape. Yeah. I saw thirty bucks. Paul that says year. in the chat, if you have a, a po- if you have the poster with it, it's worth between fifty yeah. and sixty pounds. So pretty yeah. pricey for yeah. a Spectrum game. I saw one go for thirty, but it didn't have the it, it was missing something. But the poster is available separately uh, from a guy. But who knows if it's, you know? I don't know if people they care if it's an authentic poster or reprint. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So there you go. But an interesting game uh, for sure. I guess you know we should, we mentioned this was. Released on various uh, various uh, uh, computers, and what you've got here is a look at the C64 version, uh, which, I mean, of course, I'm assuming this works exactly the same way, and I would assume that it's fairly competent. I didn't look at it too closely. It looked very, very close, so I'm guessing they ported it over uh, from one to the other. Did you look at any of the other versions of these? I didn't. I didn't look at them, but... Um... That's the C sixty four, right? Yeah, it looks like they just they just they didn't really add a lot to it. In no. fact, you know, in like so many uh, Spectrum to C sixty four ports, the game looks worse because it doesn't have that that distinctive specy. Yeah, style. I mean, it, 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 I was gonna say maybe it runs a little bit quicker, but I'm not even sure no, I would even I go that yeah. far. It looks eerily similar. Yeah, it does. All right, well, that's gonna close the door on Deus Ex Machina. Uh, it's time to thank all the fine folks, Aaron, that make Iris Sinclair happen. The first people we have to thank are our Clive's Club members. Mm. And we got to start right at the top with Clive's Club chairman, Paul, a.k.a. Hermsky. This was a Herm Firm pick, Aaron. He's the one that nominated this, and the Clive's Club voted on it and selected it for us. So if you want a man to thank, it's Paul, a.k.a. You know, Hermsky. Before you move on with, this, with your list here, yeah, let's, man. Let's, I want to close this up. Okay. This game was uh, weird and depressing. Mm-hmm. Okay, however, I don't want to end the show on a down note. You know why? Because it was clever, it was innovative, it was something I've never seen before, and I've seen a lot of stuff over the years. I'm happy I saw it, and I'm happy I looked at it, and I'm happy these guys came up with it. I'm not into the weird, I'm not really into the whole weird scene, you know, that psychedelic stuff, but it was an experience I won't soon forget, so I would give thumbs up to the to the whole crew that put this forth, at least they're thinking a little bit outside the box. Yeah. Now absolutely. I'm ready for something not depressing, though, Boat. After this and Frankie, you know what I'm hoping for? Oh, well, Frankie Frank, didn't think was depressing. No, no, I'm just ready for something like Bubble Bobble. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> give, me, give me something a little lighter. We'll see, though, because that's out of our hands. Yeah. Um, but we need to continue to, to thank the Clive's Please Club members. Please continue, yeah. Okay? We got Richard Goulstone, Paul Bossman Harrington, McChessers, Jed Byrne, Justin Tinpot Gamer, Orc Meal. Uh, thank you guys so much for uh, selecting. We we do appreciate. We would have never picked this one out on our own, and I am glad. The I thing is, this I is played. the kind of game that we would have seen it without and had no idea about the music right. or anything. And if you don't know about that, then you're screwed. Right. You got to have that. You got nothing. Yeah. You got nothing. So thank you guys. We also want to thank all of our R. Sinclair supporters: Chartel, Shashi Das, Jigglebox, David Harris, Andrew Waite. Eric Nelson, Cap'n Crispy, Laurent Giroux, Mark Downey, Peter Mulholland, Chris Foltz, Gary Heather, Mark Durham, Mitsuyama, and Pixels at Dawn. Um, Thank you. 
if you would like to support this wacky endeavor, and you probably hate us now because we, we trash the game that everybody loves. Most but am. But if that hasn't turned you off, patreon.com slash Iris and Claire. Uh, we would love to have you as part of our Discord community, uh, as part of Clive's Club. Um, it's a good time, and there's lots of really awesome people that are part of this community. Mm. So Outstanding. All right, Aaron. What are we going to play next next time? <laughs> Oh, Jack the Nipper, Aaron. Jack, Jack the, the Nipper. Nipper. I've heard of this one. This is that Spinal Tap musical. You're not the one. Saucy Jack. <laughs> Saucy Jesus. <laughs> I, uh, this is one I've, I'm surprised. I, we've never tackled this ever. Aaron. No, and anything. this is a very well-known game. Yeah. I think this got a lot of releases, sequels, etc. This was uh, nominated by Jed Byrne. He nominated this, and of course, Clive's Club all voted on it, and this is what we're going to play next time. All right, time. sounds good to me, man. Yeah, all right, guys. Well, thanks as always for watching. We'll see you next time. Until then, rewind tape and press play.